all right students this is your accounting coach ard and the topic of the day is statement of changes in equity now if you haven't gone through my lecture for statement of changes in equity or company accounts concepts i do recommend that first you may go through the concepts lecture then revisit this practice question the question today that we have is statement of changes in equity named dharolia limited now basically it is not a past paper question it is just a practice question being made by me uh, named dharolia limited as you can see it's my surname so let's talk about dharolia limited on 31st december 2012 dharolia limited statement of financial position which is also known as balance sheet previously included the following now we have some balances written at end of the year 2012 we have ordinary share capital dollar one shares 60000 uh this means the shareholders of the company the owners of the company has have invested $60000 in dharolia limited okay there is a dollar one share means one share is worth dollar one so this one dollar is known as nominal value or par value nominal value or par value and in pakistan we also use the term face value so the cie term is nominal value or par value is $1 means the original value of these shares is $1 so we have $60000 value and one share is worth $1 means number of shares would also be 60000 if the value of each share was $2 and the capital value is again $60000 we need to calculate the number of shares by dividing $60000 divided by 2 means this becomes 30000 shares so but in this scenario there are number of shares 60000 because each share is valued at $1 what i am trying to explain if the share value is more than or less than $1 number of shares and the dollar amount would be different but in this case this is the same value then we have general reserve $13000 general reserve what does this mean general reserve is a reserve created by company generally if i take example of a household our mom is saving some money for the future so our dad ask uh so why are you honey why are you saving money so what would mom reply mom would reply i have not thought about this that why i am saving this money maybe she is saving for uh children education maybe she is saving for marriage uh so in this uh, south asia and these middle east contexts as you may be aware there are heavy hefty sums need to be spent on the wedding uh especially daughter's wedding so therefore mom is saving for that so more of maybe for home furnishing or improvement in the future so mom has not yet decided for what reason she's saving the money for so this is known as general reserve so in terms of company context company is also saving money maybe for future business expansion maybe uh, to invest in new technology new machinery and equipment maybe to cover losses for the future or maybe to pay dividends in the future so this is a general reserve being created by the company then we have retained earnings retained earnings is also a kind of reserve and retained earnings are the profits of the company that company has earned previously and they are not being distributed yet in terms of of uh, dividend this is known as retained earning retained earnings were also known as accumulated funds in the past accumulated funds so retained earning is also a reserve and general is also a reserve so what in company we do uh, uh, in company we keep the amount that we have invested previously separately such as ordinary share capital and the amount that we are saving for the future Uh, separately as a reserve maybe general reserve or retained earning but as you may be aware in sole trader scenario 
what we do uh, we use the format opening capital add profit and less drawing means closing capital so whatever we have invested and whatever we are earnings in terms of profits we add up all together but in companies not the case we keep separately the amount that we have invested in the business and the amount that we have uh, earned so we keep both of them separate during the year 2013 the rolia limited issued 40000 additional ordinary shares of dollar one each mean we have invested more money into the business and the shareholders have invested more amount in the business then we have paid a final dividend of 4000 from the previous year uh, this means uh, what does the term dividend means i hope you have gone through my earlier lecture for company account concepts in order to understand this you may need the prerequisite knowledge for that so dividend is basically the return that the company paid to its shareholders to its owners so darulia limited paid final dividend from the previous year now there are two types of dividend paid by company uh, one that is paid during the year is known as interim dividend and one that is paid at the end of the year is known as final dividend now what does the company do basically company basically pays interim dividend of current year in the same year if i am standing in 2019 uh, right now it's 2019 uh, do share your comments and let me know at which date you are studying this lecture so in 2019 if I pay dividend for the same year this is known as interim dividend and the final dividend for 2019 will be paid in the next year that is 2020 and the previous year dividend for 2018 final dividend for the previous year 2018 will be paid in current year 2019 now to summarize what the company does is that the uh, interim dividend for current year is basically paid in this year and interim uh, and the final dividend for current year will be paid in the next year upcoming year and the final dividend for previous year will be paid in current year so there there is a final dividend for last year need to be paid and the interim dividend of 0.1 per share on shares held at the beginning of the year uh, company made a profit of 28,000. This is a final profit known as profit for the year, also known as profit after interest. So we need to deduct the interest on the loan or the debentures that we have taken. Debentures on loan here mean the same thing. And now at the end of the year, the directors need to transfer 10,000 to general reserve and the directors proposed a final dividend of 0.2 per share. If the question says proposed, announced or declared this means no entry need to be made so this is uh, for uh, this is the important point uh, if the question states proposed announced or declared this means you don't have to do anything this is just for the future we have just given a proposal whether this proposal is accepted or rejected by shareholders in the AGM annual general meeting now it's up to them whether they want to accept this dividend or whether they want to reject it. So for the proposed dividend in uh, this uh, question, we won't make any entry. Wherever you see proposed dividend adjustment in company accounts, need to ignore it. Uh, now the requirement is prepare statement of changes in equity and statement of financial position extract. So what do we do? Uh, in company accounts, there are basically three components. One is income statement, then there is statement of changes in equity, and last but not the least, there is a statement of financial position, also known as balance sheet. Now, the company income statement is largely same as we previously used to make for a sole trader. Now, the only difference is that, that the interest expense was previously charged as an expenses in terms of sole traders but whenever we are making a company income statement the interest expense or on the loan or debentures is not charged as an expense rather it is shown separately at the end of the income statement now firstly we need to start with the sales then we need to deduct the cost of sales in order to arrive a profit of gross profit then we need to add other income then there are expenses excluding interest we'll be charging all the expenses excluding interest in order to get the profit figure that is profit before interest then the last 
at the final note we will be deducting interest expense as to show it separately then we will be getting profit for the year also known as profit after interest now in this question specifically I do not need to make income statement I just need to make a statement of changes in equity and then we'll study how to make a balance sheet now let, let's move forward to the question so I would recommend to you must take a printout of this question this question uh, PDF link is available in the bottom and the video description you may open the PDF link and you can uh, print it or keep it separately in a separate handle device so that you can refer to the question uh, as I'm solving it now I'm making this statement of changes in equity we need to start with the name of the company on the top that is the Rolia limited in my case uh, then we need to write the heading statement of change in equity the heading will only be written in the exam if it's not already given if the heading is already given and the format is already given you just need to start filling in uh, now there are separate columns for each item of equity starting with ordinary share capital now there is basically two types of capital in the company known as ordinary share capital and preference share capital if you have gone through the basics concepts video lecture you may be aware there are two types of capital one is ordinary share capital another is preference share capital so ordinary share capitals are the rear owners of, owners of the company and preference share capital are the special category or special privileged class of shareholders now why they are privileged there are given preference in two ways firstly if you need to pay dividend you have to pay the dividend to preference shareholder first uh, before uh, paying preference shareholders you cannot pay dividend to ordinary shareholders and then if the company is out of business that is bankrupt we need to return the money to our preference shareholder first uh, after that you if there is anything left for the ordinary shareholders you may give it to them so now in this question the Rolia limited question uh, we do not have a preference share capital so I may start with ordinary share capital column and if there is a preference share capital we also need to include it in statement of change in equity then we have reserves known as general reserve and retained earnings then we have a total column total column is optional uh, if the format is not given in an examination question you do not need to make total equity and now it's up to you if you want to make it but if the format is already given and there is a total column in it you must fill the total column so I need to make a statement of change in equity for 2013 uh, 31st December 2013 so I may start at 1st January 2013 there are the opening balances now the balances that are given in the question are of previous year now the previous year Year ended at 31st December 2012 so the 2012 closing balance will become opening balance for 2013 we have ordinary share capital of $60,000 we have general reserves of 13,000 and retained earning for 9,000 and now I, if I add all of these this will become total equity then we have profit after interest also known as profit for the year now profit for the year is given in the question uh, 28,000 so profit will be added in retained earning column uh, remember my dear students whenever the company earns profits this profits are credited to retained earnings account and if there are losses after interest that is loss for the year the loss will be debited that is deducted from retained earning column uh, so this is important the profit and loss uh, is always added to or subtracted from retained earning not in any other column uh, now, now this is the profit after interest already given if the question specifically stated that the profit is before interest we need to deduct the interest first we cannot show interest here the interest is deducted in a separate rough working because the interest is part of income statement not part of statement of changes in equity now we have some other transaction ordinary dividend now the company has paid dividend there are two forms of dividend one that is paid during the year is interim dividend and one that is paid at the end of the year is final dividend now the interim dividend that the company paid is 0.1 per share on shares held at the beginning of the year so uh, if you have the question in other hand you may see that the number of shares previously in the last year was 60,000 shares now we need to pay dividend to 60,000 shares at 0.1 per share that is 10 cents 
Uh, so now if you multiply 60,000 into point 0.1, we will be getting 6,000. So dividend is also paid from retained earning column first. And if the retained earning column is exhausted, that has already been used, we may use the general reserve. But the general reserve is always used second hand. Firstly, we will be using retained earning. So if the retained earning column decreases, our total all equity also goes down by 6,000. Now this is important if we are paying a dividend on per share basis. If the dividend is given on per share basis, we need to multiply it with number of shares. And if the dividend is given as a percentage, so as in the case in preference shares, normally in preference shares, it is always given 5, 10 or 8 somewhat percentage. If we are applying percentage, we always need to apply percentage on the dollar value. Now there are two values for shares. One is number of shares and one is dollar value of shares. If we are given a percentage dividend, we'll be multiplying percentage with uh, applying percentage of the dollar value. But if we are given number of shares, we'll be multiplying it with uh, if we are given a dividend per share, we'll need to multiply it to number of shares. Then we have final dividend. Uh, the question specifically states that the previous year final dividend is still pending and will need to be paid in this year that is 2013. Again, this is also paid from retained earning and the total equity also goes down. Now in this question, the Rolia Limited one, the Rolia Limited has also issued new shares. Uh, uh, the Rolia Limited specifically issued new shares to his, uh, its existing shareholders or maybe the uh, outside shareholders, new shareholders. So there are uh, new share capital worth 60,000 uh, for 40,000. So if we are issuing new share 40,000 times one, this become $40,000. So new share capital, whenever it's coming in the business, will be crediting ordinary share capital account. So if the ordinary share capital increases, our total equity column also goes up. Then we have a transfer to general reserve. We have transferred some money to the general reserve. Then whenever we are transferring money to general reserve, the general reserve column increases. And from where we are transferring, we are transferring it from retained earning. Always remember whenever general reserve is being created, another uh, account that is being uh, deducted or debited is retained earning column. So this is just an example that we are taking uh, out money from one pocket and putting it to another pocket. Now, now neither we are richer than previously and neither we are poorer. So that make no difference on the wealth of the company. Total equity column remain. Now we'll be calculating the total equity. Uh, previously the share capital was 60,000. We've issued new shares worth 40,000. This becomes a total $400,000 value of share capital. General reserve of PVC 13,000. We need to increase by 10,000. The total becomes 23. Then we have retained and increase in 9,000. We'll uh, adding or crediting 28,000 of this year profit and we are deducting the dividends and we'll be deducting transfer to general reserve sum in order to get the closing value. Then and we have a total equity column total equity column is just need uh, used to check whether all of the items in any of the columns uh, are all already uh, uh, entered in the total equity column so this the vertical total is also 140000 and the horizontal total of these three subtotals is also 140000 now students we have successfully uh, done with statement of changes in equity if you haven't uh, subscribed my channel you must do it first uh, so now in order to go forward there uh, there was another requirement in this question with the name of uh, we need to make statement of financial position extract uh, in a in a statement of financial position this is a marking scheme for this and how much marks do you expect from the examiner one mark for these figures and one one mark for these figures so in order to make a statement of financial position also known as balance sheet uh, we are just required to make an extract here so why an extract why not the full income statement uh, full balance sheet the full balance sheet is same as it was previously made under a sole trader question now the only difference in the statement of financial position for a sole trader and a company is this uh, the equity and reserve section uh, now if you have already made a statement of financial position previously now I hope you have already did 
uh, whether with sole trader and in a sole trader question we'll be starting with uh, assets then non current asset there are basically three columns of the statement of financial position starting with cost accumulated depreciation and net book value for non current asset then we move further to current assets now if we add non current and current we'll be getting a figure of total assets now after assets we'll be writing capital and liabilities now in the capital section in terms of sole trader or a manufacturer we may start with opening capital then we add profit for the year then we did a drawings in order to get a closing capital figure i hope this sounds familiar if not you must first go and revisit that topic then uh, we'll be moving forward to liabilities then in liabilities it is the same such as non current liabilities loan and debenture whatever and there is a current liability now the only difference in a sole trader and a partnership and a company income statement is of capital section in a sole trader and a manufacturing we may start with opening capital then we add profit for the year then we deduct drawings in order to get closing capital what do we do in a um, partnership scenario uh, we write only two things in a capital section one is capital account and another one is current account now in a statement of financial position of a company we do not write opening capital or capital account or current account we may write equity and reserves so there is a separate heading known as equity and reserve uh, will be writing all these items but the name of the items will be uh, will be copying from the question given so all of the uh, specific or uh, official names will be used for this such as we have a ordinary share capital and it is written dollar 1 shares we need to mention the number of shares it's written in the question and the dollar 1 value or that is nominal value of each share then the value will be writing uh, is 100000 not the 60000 because the 60000 value was for previous year now for this year at the end of the year the value becomes 100000 so we'll be writing 100000 here the closing value of share capital then we have some reserves known as general reserve again the general reserve will be using the closing value that is 23000 then we have retained earning also known as accumulated profits previously or profit and loss account the total value for retained earning is 17000 now if i add all these three figure i'll be getting this total 140000 this total is given a specific name by the examiner and this is known as total shareholder funds now any other name other than this is not acceptable if we'll be writing total shareholder funds will be gaining one mark so this is the statement of financial position extract now after that you can write non current liabilities and current liabilities and else all of the balance sheet is same and the last thing i need to mention in this question if the question specifically asks for statement of financial position extract uh, for equity and reserve then the examiner also asks also show the figure for non current liability or also mention capital employed now if i add debentures and loan that is non current liability in this figure total shareholder fund figure i'll be getting the figure for capital employed so i hope students i was able to communicate with you for the topic uh, regarding statement of changes in equity now if you do benefit from my videos kindly do share my videos and show uh, uh, give me feedback at the end of this video with your comments and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so thank you